All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna start our interior framing because as you can see behind me, we've got all of our Myrex up, we've got it all detailed, it's all taped off, and we've got a nice sealed building. What we've done though, is we previously, I didn't get it on film, we set the laser up, and Greg went ahead and marked all of our girt rows. We actually have girt row marks. If you look, you'll see this line on the back, on the inside of the post. Um, inside the Myrex. That's where we were originally going to be, but we realized that when the drywaller comes in, he's probably going to start at the top and run a four-foot sheet of drywall. That was right where our girt line was, and it wasn't going to work. So we dropped everything, and what that's going to allow him to do is he'll have a tape bed here, and he'll have a tape bed here. So it's a lot easier to work that way than if he would have came up and had a tape bed that he had to tape a foot away from the ceiling. So we were just thinking ahead, making it easier on him. And now down here, you'll see our first bottom board. Something I wanted to note, and I might've talked about it, is the Sega Fentrum is our barrier between the concrete. It's our air seal to our Myrex also. And it allows us to get away with some white wood down here instead of a treated board, which I'm not a fan of, but you gotta consider if you're gonna be putting it right on your concrete. This is a, you know, vapor sealed concrete barrier. So I'm not really worried about moisture coming up through the floor, but this is even better. Um, so we got a lot of pipes in this building. We got a lot of plumbing. We've got multiple bathrooms. We've got a laundry room. And so what I need to do is get my laser set up. I'm gonna start laying out this floor plan. And I've got the plan here on my phone. You might be like, well, where's your big set of blueprints? Honestly, I kind of like to just have this on my phone and I can just zoom in, see whatever I need to see. Like this is the bathroom we're standing in and I can do all my dimensions. I don't have a piece of paper that gets all ratted up and torn up and lost. I've always got it right here. So that's what we're gonna get into. We're gonna start laying out all these interior walls, turn this into a house instead of just a big room. Okay, so this wall right here, I've got my laser set up and it's kind of the most important wall because it's the one that is the longest and straightest. And uh, once I get that one up, I think the other ones will all come in pretty easy. So I'm just gonna clean up my path. And you know, I don't have to snap any lines because I've actually got my laser set up. And if you remember, this laser allows us to also do our top plate. So we're gonna frame bottom plate, top plate, and then we'll come through and stick all of our, um, we'll stick all of our studs in at the end. We, we're not gonna be able to stand this up as one wall. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get my top and bottom plate together. I'm gonna to line them up, and I'm gonna start all my measurements from this west side here so that I kind of know that everything is laid out 16 inch on center from this wall. And we're just gonna mark back three quarters from every 16 inch. And I'm not gonna worry about my doors or anything really right now because I wanna you know, keep my 16 inch on center consistent. So when, when marking my top and bottom plate, it's easier to mark the two together when they're standing up on edge. But these marks actually aren't that important for me. I like to get a square line on the actual top and bottom of my plate so that when I put my stud on here, it's square and it's not all kitty wampus. But those side marks, they are pretty handy because when this, when this drywall gets put on the wall and it's not gonna touch the ground, the trim guy is gonna be able to look in here, he's gonna see this line, and he's gonna know that there's a stud where he can nail his trim to. So, you know, it actually works out pretty good. I don't think it's a total waste of time or effort. All right, so now we have our top plate, which will go to the ceiling, and our bottom plate is on the floor and we need to protect this white wood. So we're just gonna use this WeatherLogic seal tape, seal seam and flashing tape. And we're just gonna run this right over the surface of the wood. Nothing too crazy here. You could use some foam or something, but this is nice because it's obviously paper thin, so it doesn't, it, you know, impede on anything. Make sure that's good. And now this is ready to 
be installed. Uh, but if you look over here, we've got a ton of pipes and we're gonna have to deal with those. So we're just gonna bring this over. And what I like to do is I got my laser set up. So we're gonna put this where it's actually probably pretty hard for you guys to see, but I've got a laser line. And all we're going to do is, oh man, this is a little bit unfortunate. We got a stud that's gonna be right here. So we're gonna have to shift that over, probably do a little bit of extra framing. Um, that one looks like it's gonna be good down there. This guy's gonna be tight. I might be able to squeeze it in. I'm just marking where this pipe is. And unfortunately, we might just have to cut this whole bottom plate out here. Uh, see, this is all gonna be garbage. Mm -mm. I think I might be able to squeeze this in right alongside the stud and then it's gonna be a little bit tricky for the plumber, but this is all PEX, so it's somewhat flexible, obviously, and they can kind of do what they want, but taking these insulating collars off gives me a lot more flexibility with this wall plate though for sure it's going to be a lot easier to get it inside of it without having to cut it entirely out so we're just going to do a little bit of surgery i'm just cutting this because you can see my laser this will move enough that i think it'll be inside the wall cavity but without all this insulation around it it's going to be a lot easier all right now that i've got all this cleaned out it's going to be a lot easier for me to figure out where I'm going to be cutting holes for pipes. So what I like to do is I'm just gonna take my little square here and I'm gonna line up to the center like so. And then I'm going to measure because I have a laser. You can kind of see it on my finger, I think. It's right on the edge of my board. Do you see that laser? Or maybe that's a little bit more visible. So what I can do now is just measure here and I'm about a half of an inch. So this one's pretty dang close to the edge to my center. Wait, that was my edge. So this is, uh, hmm. let's do that again. We're about one inch center. So actually we want this about one inch. So here's a, a pipe. We got this guy here, it's gonna line up here. And centered, or about inch three eighths. There's a little bit of flex here. And then I'm just gonna center this pipe here also. It's a little bit harder, so like so. Here I'm gonna measure off the side. So we're gonna be half of an inch to the start of it. And this is a, that's two and, I'll cut a two and nine sixteenths hole. So it's going to be pretty much this whole thing, but I'm going to try to keep as much material as possible. Um, and this is also why we are not doing walls in place. It would be impossible to stand a wall over these pipes with a ceiling already framed up top. This is the one I'm gonna to try to sneak over as much as possible, right about there. Okay, so that's where my stud is. We're gonna to have to cheat that stud over a little bit. And at the end of the day, I think it's gonna be just fine. So we're about two inch on that guy. And then two inch on this guy. So now that we have all of our marks, Let's go ahead and drill some holes. I like to always just get through so that my hole is through so I can drill the other side. It's a cleaner hole instead of blowing out and throwing a bunch of chips like this. 
you get a nice clean hole, both sides. There we go. There we go. Where's the line at? Let me go over just a hair. On concrete. That's good. That's good. That's good, good, good. Yeah, I think we're good. So now we can go ahead and get this secured. Yeah, awesome. Where am I, Mark? Okay, so we've got to tap con this bottom plate down to the concrete. And a lot of people are gonna ask, how do you know where you can do that? Because you've got radiant heat pipes underneath this. Well, I've got this concrete scanner from Makita here. It's very new to me, so I'm still learning the capabilities of it. But I've played around with it enough to know that it, it does like a sonar um, depth detection. And I'm gonna select dry concrete. And when I run this thing side to side, it gives me a layout of what's in the floor and what depth. And so I can see that everything is below about four inches or right at that four inch range, my mesh, my pecs. Um, and we'll do, a, we'll do a more detailed video on this in the future. Um, but just know that I can ensure that if I set the depth of my drill bit to not go any deeper than a couple inches, and we're just using a uh, two and three quarter Tapcon, I'm gonna be perfectly okay. So that's what we're gonna use to put this plate down and we're gonna follow that laser line that we've already established. Hard to see, but it, these pipes are in the way, but it's right here. Isotunes, RRB10. I said I was gonna check the depth just want to show you. So what we've got going on there is this is pretty close to the depth of this. And because this has a vacuum, it's going to clean that hole out real nice. And I can get away with, uh, with going that deep. I'm going to go just a hair deeper. So by having that vacuum, it's going to clean that hole out and allow these tap cons to run in a lot better. No problem. And we're just gonna go like every couple studs. And I can see my laser line right here. Make sure that we're good. Okay, we'll just do that down the wall every 16 inches, 16 or, or 32 inches or so, but I wanna make sure that I don't go through any area where there's gonna be a door opening because I would hate to screw through and then have to cut that out and pull a screw out of the concrete. Okay, so here I'm measuring out on the plan. They've got a doorway at 6-1. I'm gonna go ahead and mark my king stud, my jack stud. And I could have done this on the sawhorses, but I, I like to get everything down and then measure off of walls because it's, it's just a little bit different than your traditional framing. I totally could have done this. I guess this is just the way I feel most comfortable getting it exactly where I'm at. And then I'll be able to laser this point up to the ceiling to ensure that this jam is perfect, not just based off the layout that I did over here on the sawhorse. So now that I know where this is at, I'm gonna make sure my plate is right where I want it on the laser. And we'll throw this tap con in. That way when we cut that out, that doesn't go anywhere. Okay, now I need to find the dimension of this door. It's a double door. I wanna make sure I have the accurate dimension so that I can find the other jam and get a tap con on this side. And then this will all just get cut out. All right, a little trick here that I always like to do is I'm measuring out a 62 inch rough opening for my door. I'm actually gonna put my tape at 10 inches because if I'm here at the end, it's not always very easy to be perfect, but 10 is a very easy number to line up. And then I need 62 inch opening. So I'm just gonna add 62 to 10, which is easy, 72. And then that is gonna be my rough opening. 
So sometimes people will like go to the nearest foot and add 12 inches, but I think 10 inches is the easiest because anybody can add 10 to a number a lot easier than 12. So now I know my rough opening for the door. We'll get that squared away. And then we'll add another Tapcon right here. Now that we have the bottom plate down, remember we marked this top plate at the same time. So this is gonna go up on the ceiling. It's gonna follow the laser line just like our bottom plate did and that's gonna ensure that it is perfectly plumb to one another. And then the next step after we get this up will be cutting our studs. Okay, Greg, this is where I'm gonna need you though. Actually, no, I don't need you. You keep doing what you do. The laser makes it easy. So let's see, we're just gonna get that close. Right there. Right on my laser. Boom. The laser just makes it too easy. Almost feel like you're stealing money when you're working this easy. I don't need help, Greg. I got a laser. It's replaced you. Yeah, I will. I don't know why you would ever want to have to pull measurements and snap lines. Like once this is set up, this is just money uh, the whole time. So now I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna turn this into a maze on this floor, get all my bottom and top plates done, and then we'll be back after this time-lapse footage where we'll start installing all of our wall studs. All right, so now you guys can see behind me where Greg has installed these girts while I've been working on these walls. And this is our service cavity. So this inch and a half is gonna be where we can mount boxes, run conduit, run wiring, and not have to penetrate this system right here. So there are some things that are tricky, corners. Corners have to be taken care of because you've gotta get, either your pipe has to go around the corner or we have to come through some interior walls but the goal is to reduce any time that we penetrate this, which is why post frame is awesome because we've automatically got our wall girts here. We got our framing on the ceiling and something I wanted to talk about because people always ask is how we do these corners. So Greg plumbed up this corner line from top to bottom and then this is getting toenailed in. We don't really have to worry about it. It works really well. It's a nice secure connection um, and people always ask about it. So there you go. It's just a simple toenail. This location right here is special because, and we got a lot of special locations, this girt goes right through my window. Now, I don't want to have to put this up and cut it out, uh, but in some locations, if we're still going to have enough meat on our board, we will do that. We'll just cut it out, and there's some windows like that that we will have to do. But in this instance, we're going to go ahead and run this right flush at the bottom, and then we'll fill in this section with a little bit of framing. The important thing to note is that this girt is not a drywall joint girt. So where the drywall joints will be, this is not an issue. There will be a joint here and there'll be a joint up here. So it's just gonna span over and we got, uh, make sure I like this. We don't have to worry about this being exactly two foot on center or a solid piece. We can joint this and it's just gonna be a nailer for our drywall. So we're just gonna flush this up It's always good just to make sure it's perfect. See that? I mean, 
wood's just not perfect, so we'll just move this right up to where we want to be. Nail it. And so this is where we were going to be normally, and we will transition back to this line. But for now, this is where this is going to go. Now, I know I always talk about the 600G because I genuinely think that if you're framing and you're not using something like this, you're really spending more time and effort than you need. Specifically right here, I have to, I'm putting a wall plate here. There's going to be a, an intersecting wall perpendicular, but I want it perfect 90 degrees. I can set one plane of my laser right on my uh, edge of my wall. I can set the other one in perfect plane with my wall plate. Right, you can kind of see that we're lined up right here. And now what I can do, just lining it up at the other end, this is giving me a perfect 90 degree line all the way over to my wall. And look at that, that's kind of a beautiful thing. I marked this out from the corner just to get an idea where I'm going. And I guess we're running pretty square because that's right where my laser is. And without having to, you know, traditionally you might come out here you might use a factor of the three, four, five triangle, make a couple marks. You have to hold it on a diagonal. It's kind of a two man job and it can be a little bit inaccurate. This guy right here, easy as just, it's like stealing candy from a baby and take a look at that. Now I've got my square line at my top. This is where my wall plate's gonna go up on the ceiling. So trust me, good investment if you build and you want to build accurate so now i can go ahead and get this mounted get my ceiling mounted and we're pretty close we got all these other plates installed and we're going to be cutting some studs and filling in these walls real quick Greg thinks my glasses are looking a little nerdy, but hey, I'm just trying to be safe, especially when working overhead, which I'm doing now. And what I wanted to share was because we're using two by four walls, you're gonna see when this goes up here, this laser line is the wall plate line, but because it's gonna be up in the same plane as these guys, I need drywall nailer. So what I'm going to do is take a two by six and I've scribed, let's see if I can get up in there. I've scribed a one inch line so that I can line that up with my laser. And the goal is when my wall plate gets put here, I'm gonna have a one inch drywall nailer um, for my drywall guy when he's doing his ceiling. So something I didn't consider initially, you know, this is kind of a new, new method for us. Oof, now I can just line that right up with my laser and then I'll put my two by four top plate right on top of that. And if you wanted to, you can kind of see what I'm talking about up here. So you see, whenever we're doing framing perpendicular to our ceiling, uh, I guess our service cavity, our two by four strapping, we don't have to worry about it. But when we come and we run parallel with it, we got to make sure that we have framing on both sides so that our ceiling uh, in uh, drywall can get fastened to something. Okay, now, so easy. Grab our exact dimension. 14, 5 eighths. Sometimes I get in a hurry, but I want to make sure that I put my layout on this top also. So when I go to install my studs later, I'm not like darn it. And the nice thing is a lot of times I want to put this board next to the other one and do all this layout at the same time like I did earlier where you put two boards together and mark both of them at the same time. What I found is we're not perfect. So if this wall has even the slightest lean to it and it's, let's say it's out an eighth of an inch, a quarter inch, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, it's out one way or the other. All of my interior partitions are all perfectly plumb with the laser. 
So what happens is when I go out to the walls, which I'm doing now, I'm taking a measurement out to that wall. If I'm off at all, and I were to lay these out together and just cut them all as the same, and I go to put this up, it might have an eighth inch or a quarter inch gap. So I like to do one plate at a time when it's, like I started with two plates, but as you start laying things out and everything is coming from a perfect plumb line, you gotta be a little bit more conscientious. Otherwise, you're gonna do this and then your, your studs might be leaning one way or the other. I, I think that makes sense. Um, the more accurate you build, kind of everything has to be accurate. So uh, it's just something to consider. Not always can you just be blowing and going and think about production. You gotta always be conscious minded about uh, what your actions are gonna lead to down the road so that you don't hurt yourself or the finisher, the drywall or whoever it is. So this end right here is gonna start where I've got a perfect plumb line and it matches the plate at the bottom which starts on that perfect plumb line. So I can assure that all these studs are gonna go up and they're going to be plumb as well. You know, for instance, this wall right here, this plate at the bottom and this top plate, they're actually a quarter inch difference. And that, that could be many things. It could be this bottom board here is bowed out an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch, and the top one is the opposite way. But the point is, if I would have cut these at exactly the same dimension, installed the bottom, installed the, the top, then this corner right here, from here to there, would not be perfectly plumb. But instead, this is where I set up my laser. I got an exact plumb line up at the ceiling, and then my dimensions are what they are. So we try to be as good as we can, but when you're working with wood, not everything is perfectly straight, so you end up with that sort of a problem, and we solve it by saying, this is always a perfect point, and whatever happens on the outsides, it is what it is. You know, I think I talked about this earlier, but this is a great example is I wanna go from a center point and get a door frame. So this is my center. It's a 38 inch rough opening. And instead of going 19 both ways, I'm actually gonna set it at, 19, at 29 and it's an easy mark at 10, that's 19. And then I'm just gonna add 10 to my 38, which is 48. So now I've got exactly what my opening is. Good old Martinez here. Check this out, boom, line it up with my mark, boom, boom. There's an inch and a half mark, so you can get a perfect inch and a half spacing for all your layout. Once you get your first mark, you're just gonna slide it over to that inch and a half mark. Jack King, ready to frame a door in. All right, now that I have all these wall plates, bottoms, tops, Greg is gonna go around and he's going to, while I finish up a couple, he's gonna take the LDM and get a measurement for each stud. So it's the beautiful thing about this guy. You can just easily point click and it's gonna give you a super accurate number. Greg, you know to always take about a 16th or so off of that measurement? Yep. Perfect, and uh, he's just gonna write those down and then we're gonna start bringing these in, laying them out, and this is the fun part because we're gonna get some walls put up pretty darn quick now. So I'm gonna finish what I'm doing and Greg is gonna get all these measurements. All right, now that we are on to wall framing, I'm gonna work on door jams. So I'm gonna define all the doorways and Greg, you might hear in the background, is gonna be cutting all the studs that he measured with the LDM. So what I'm gonna do is first cut my king stud um, and then I'm going to build my jack into that and that's gonna get my door frame. So, uh, so that I can install that. We'll come back in later, do our headers, but it's kind of this is so that I can do one thing and Greg can do another and we're not stepping over each other, but both moving forward. So one thing to note, I'm going to crown all my boards. If you don't know what a crown is, no lumber is perfectly straight. I've got my little uh, arrow here, and I'm always gonna point 
the direction of the board. So when you look down a board, you're gonna see if the board goes this way or goes this way. And we're going to point the arrow in the direction that it curves. The reason we do this is because when we build our wall, we want all of our walls to be as even as possible. If your crowns are doing this against each other, your wall is gonna look wavy. Important thing for us on a doorway is these are my jack studs that I'm cutting down to 80 and a half for my rough opening. I've also crowned these and when I frame them, I'm gonna crown them, I'm gonna install them opposite my king stud so that they kind of straighten each other out. In essence, we want our door jams to be as good as possible. So that's the lumber we use first so that we can ensure we have the best lumber. You can kind of burn up a less than desirable stud in a wall. You don't want to use that lumber on your door. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut these down and we'll get these framed together. This is crowned this way, so I'm gonna take this guy, which is already pre-cut, and I'm gonna crown it the opposite way. But I also have to consider where my crown is in the wall. And what I mean by that is back here, this you will see, this is gonna be, this right here is going to be a sink. This cabinet is gonna be stalled against this wall. So I'm consciously thinking all the crowns in this wall, we got a a lab here, a lab over there. I want all my crown to go out of the wall cavity. So not only do I have to think about making sure my crowns are opposite each other on my door frames, but what's going on in the room, like I'm framing this doorway right here right now, I don't have to worry that much because it's just a, this is like the, uh, well this is the toilet room, so you'll be able to go do your business, close the door. I don't care about crown that much, so as long as I'm consistent, I'm okay. And we'll get more into why this crown matters maybe later, but just know that you can crown your boards. If you don't know what you're doing with that crown, it really does no good, so. All right, so I'm thinking about this. I always make my crown away from the room. So this is my corner jam, which means I'm gonna want it to go this way. Let me see, I, I wanna get confused here. Crown is gonna go that way. So my crown's facing that way, and this one is gonna go opposite that. So now I can line up the bottoms, make sure that I'm good and flush everywhere. We'll go ahead and tack a nail, and then I'm just gonna work my way right up, kind of alternating and feeling that they line up nice. Then I'm just gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna kind of do the same alternating pattern. Okay, now this specific jam is actually going to be, let me think about this. This is a three ply. So I need to add another ply to this and we're gonna go ahead and alternate it again, hoping to straighten out this guy as much as possible. So not rocket science here, but you just wanna be thoughtful to what you're doing. Oof, look at that. This is why this is nice. We're gonna straighten this guy out, see that? That board looked pretty good up until the very end, and that's just the way lumber is, so that way I can kind of straighten it out as I go. All right, now this guy's good to install. So when installing our jams, very important, oops, I don't wanna lean that there. Very important that it is plumb. That is where this guy's gonna come back into play. And all I'm looking to do is make sure I'm perpendicular with the wall. I'm gonna line it up with my king stud. The reason I'm not lining it up with my jack, which is the inside of the door, is because it's not gonna, it's not gonna go all the way up. It stops at the header height. So now we can just set this in here. And hopefully, Lining it up with my king, 
and then now I can see it all the way up there. Now, if you're looking at this, this is just going to be a single stud that's going to connect to this wall stud. If this was an exterior wall, I would detail this a little bit different, but since we're inside where there's no insulation, we're just looking for structure. Uh, that's going to be perfectly fine. And actually, I think that's what this guy is right here. So this guy's going to go, oh, that's a little loose. Maybe that's not for this. That might be for over here. I don't know. Greg's cutting me some lumber and laying it out. So. I think that actually goes over here. But anyway, now what I can do is grab my ladder and I'll get it connected right there at the laser. Now I'm using a three inch, actually, I think they're three and an eight. No, I think they're three inch ring shank. And just in case, I'm always putting a slight angle on my uh, nail just so I don't go through and pop into the concrete. So in case you're wondering, maybe you're not. Sure is nice when they kind of go in there nice and snug. That's what I'm talking about. This is the way I want it to go, to be able to just put a stud in, take it right to its mark, get them all up there, then come back through. But it does take a very precise measurement if they're too tight, you're gonna you're gonna push the wall or the ceiling up, and if they're too loose, they just don't sit in there. So Greg's doing a good job of getting these cut, and I'm doing a good job making sure all my arrows are pointing the same way. Look at that! Now I just got to nail them off. Greg, be proud of me. I just picked up my pass load and realized it was out of nails before I made my cut or my before I made my first um, nail here and that first hit is usually going to send the stud just a little bit to the other side no big deal we can just go ahead and set these nails in and then pound it so it's flush again and then I throw a couple more nails I try to keep my hand away obviously that seems conceptually the smart thing to do, but sometimes you want your hand to hold something exactly where you need it. So I just try to always keep my hand out of the way of a nail. Nice thing is the pads load does a really good job of toe nailing in once the board is really nice and solid. Look at that, man. Beautiful. What wall, Greg? The long one. It goes all the way from the door jam, like straight through there. Yep. Yep. I don't have the two by six inch cut yet. Three sixteenths is here. I've got those separated into two different piles for you because they're just like not the better ones. Okay. But... You know, every once in a while we all make mistakes, and I'm glad I caught it before it was kind of past this point. I just nailed this to the wrong side, so. We're just going to go ahead and try to cut it loose. Three nails. I know people are always like, you're just, you're just making a show to say Diablo is great, but did you just see the way Diablo just cut through those nails? These are ring shank, pass load, framing nails. It's pretty good. What? What? In the... Oh, okay. My bad. So we all make mistakes, you just got to fix them, right? And uh, Greg, you don't make mistakes, actually. I try to put you in a position where you can't make a mistake, where you just excel beyond expectation. Like you got an LDM, it gives you the exact, you don't have to read tape measure or nothing. 
It's always going to give you the right vision. What? There. Perfect. And this must be 16. Literally 10 foot lumber is the worst to work with. These are the nails we're shooting, which are all galvanized ring shanks. That's really, you know, we're not just using a bright smooth. So it's a little bit harder to shoot, but the pads load does a pretty good job sinking them. That one, these ones are going in pretty decent. You know, I know what some people are gonna say, hey man, if that laser is not perfectly perpendicular to this door jam wall, then how am I using it to level this up or plumb it up, I should say? It's because that only makes a difference if your wall that you're trying to plumb something in is not also plumb. But since we made sure that these tops and bottom plates were installed at the same time with the same laser perfectly plumbed to each other, I could actually move that laser in an arc around this point. And in theory, this is gonna be perfect. So I get those comments all the time. You can't do that unless your, your laser is perfectly square to the wall doesn't really matter in this instance guys because I am installing on a on a straight plumb and level wall you know something I wanted to mention was that I haven't changed the battery or the fuel on this thing Greg have you changed the fuel in a while on the yeah after all this wall framing yes, I when I was gone so all this room this all all right, well, just a mental note. Some people say, you know, you can't, it's no, not going to last all, all day, whatever. We've been framing all day, multiple days. No way. Well, I spoke too early. I'm out of fuel now. So, I don't know. I mean, we did a lot of framing. I'll just go get a new fuel. I mean, it's kind of part of the job. So if you're looking at it as a cost-wise issue, it's part of the job, you know? It's a job expense. It's not coming out of your profits. Using a different Tapcon here now. These are... Ooh, these are flatheads. All right, so I've been working on the framing here. This is the big room. So we've got most of the master suite framed right now. And this is gonna be like two additional bedrooms. They're not super huge. We've got like a 13 by 11. And then right here I'm framing in a nice double bifold closet. And then we're gonna have this Jack and Jill. So I'm walking in from one of the bedrooms and I'm actually able to walk into the other bedroom. So this is why they call it a Jack and Jill. It's not actually Jack and Jill's bedroom. One thing I wanted to point out, because I know people are gonna ask is, why is all this piping manifold here? Uh, there's not a utility room here. So what, what my client wanted to do was be as efficient with his piping as possible. So we've got two um, one inch lines coming from the boiler and then to this manifold, which is running all the radiant floor heat in this area instead of having loops go all the way back uh, it just is a lot more efficient this way so this is going to be in a hidden panel behind this little area right here which is like a tv you know cabinet whatever and then we've got back here another full bath toilet shower double bowl vanity so so a lot of actually actually a lot of little framing here burning up a ton of lumber but we're almost done with this interior framing. So I'm gonna keep going on it. And uh, yeah, I think we're gonna make good progress today.
I'm coming, dude. Right, dude. So I'm framing around this shower. You'll see this is the drain here. Um, and then here's some plumbing. It's a little bit unique because I really would have liked this plumbing in this bay here so that the uh, control panel, the control valves for the shower would be all right here. But also, I've got a door jam and I'm trying to frame around all this stuff so we have some good structure. And I always think about this too late, except for today I thought about it. I need to make sure that I've got additional framing right where my shower is going to end. So I'm just gonna frame up a little, kind of like a partition wall frame where I've got my, my king stud and then I'm gonna do a flat two by four and then I'm gonna have one more two by four like this. So it's gonna end my shower right about here on solid framing. It's something that you definitely wanna consider. And then when the plumber comes in here, he's gonna to have to actually snake this probably around here. And it's just the way it is. I've already talked to him, it's not a big deal, but something to think about uh, where all your additional blocking is needed for things that are, are gonna come after the framing, like showers. I just try to be very particular in showers, making sure that everything is as plumb as possible. It makes everybody's job way easier later on. So, you know, we always try to frame plumb, but very important around showers, places you know that are getting cabinetry, things like that. Because this is gonna be a door jam, we obviously wanna make sure that we're running perfectly plumb anytime we can. So we're just gonna follow that laser up and look at that, it's right on my mark. So that's kind of nice. It's right where it goes. Now that this is here, it might make even more sense. I wanna have room for a control valve, but I still wanted framing on both sides of this pipe because I didn't feel comfortable spanning this distance. And this is what the plumber said to do. So this right here, I've got a 32 inch shower. So now I have solid framing and I've got a nice plumb strong door jam. So just things to consider and hopefully that makes sense. You always want a nice solid frame on the edge of your shower so that your shower can attach and your drywall can also attach there. So we're nearing the end of the framing, which means we're nearing the end of our framing pile. So that means we're using the worst lumber at this point, and it's pretty obvious. Look down this board, I got a laser set up because I know the board is no good, and that's how far it's off at the bottom. Now, this is a perfect place to use this because I have framing to attach it to. I wouldn't wanna use this piece in just a random stud location because there's nothing that's gonna hold it other than the top and the bottom. So what I can do is I use my laser, and then I'm just going to work this board all the way. I started at the top and I'm just going to work it down. So, you know, a lot of people are always asking about lumber and how do you get away getting perfect lines and straight lines with crappy lumber. You just have to pick and choose where your lumber goes. So the more you do, the more experience you get, the more you'll be able to do this but wood, wood can be manipulated. You kind of push and pull it. And I know I'm gonna see comments. They're gonna say, well, now this is gonna, it's gonna crack and it's gonna be garbage and the stress is gonna cause problems. No, that's, that's actually not the way it works. It's gonna be just fine. And that's how you get away with the lumber that is less than desirable. We kind of place it in areas that aren't gonna necessarily be uh, able to twist and warp later on. These are all gonna be locked in. This is just a door jam and it's secured to all my exterior girts. And yes, white wood touching the concrete, hence why we have seal tape. We've taped all of our bottoms just in case there's any moisture in this concrete. It's not gonna wick its way up into our wood. Uh, we don't like treated lumber. It's not as nice to work with. It's always wet. Therefore, it will dry out and crack much, uh, much more than whitewood will.
in my experience. Okay, now we got all this framing done, it's time we gotta put some headers in and they're atypical to a standard stick frame header. So I'll show you one of those real quick. Okay, so with a post frame building, we don't have load bearing points on any of this interior structure, which means I don't have to spend extra time and money building out a strong header. So what I'm going to do is put my two by four in flat, make sure it's nice and even. And then I'm going to do another two by four. And really the main reason for this is so I still have a nice solid three inches around my door for trims, but I don't have to worry about doing some on edge framing for strength. I don't have a second story load bearing onto this point. So we get away with doing this on all of our headers. And then I'm just gonna come in here and fill this in. But before I nail this little trick that I've learned, we're gonna take this board I'm gonna bring it up here and I'm gonna transfer these marks. These are my 16 inch on center marks. That's another thing that you learn over time when you forget to do that and then you're out here pulling a tape measure and having to you know, get them all laid, laid out. You can just transfer your marks real quick. And now when Greg comes through to do this uh, additional framing, it's kind of his thing. Uh, he'll know right where to put them without having to worry about doing the math. So, never fails, out of nails. Curious, would you guys buy a t-shirt if I made that? Never fails, out of nails. Anyway, that's the header for the door and a couple studs and we're good to go. Okay, obviously sometimes when you have a big door opening as we have right now, I'm gonna do this form of a header. It's basically a vertical two by four on each side with a flat horizontal two by four top and bottom. And this is just because here we're dealing with a six foot plus opening for a double um, closet door. And obviously we don't want this to be saggy over time. Even though I don't think it would, I just feel like this is a little bit better practice. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, am I blind or are we out of nails? Now, if you're watching me use my GRK screws, it's not typical. I would use framing nails. I just ran out and I don't have any more on me. So is an expensive way to frame using these. We only use these typically when we're looking to draw something in nice and tight. Not necessarily for this application where I'm just building a door header, but I've ran out of nails. All right, that wraps up the interior framing here on the, uh, the house. You can see behind me, that's all done. We got a little bit of framing here or there to do, but for the most part, we're wrapped up. We've got the porches coming up soon, so we're gonna be framing the porches. Stick around for that, and then we're gonna be on to the exterior siding, finishing this building up, because for now, we're gonna leave. We're gonna let the plumber, electrician do all their rough-ins. Then we'll be back, and we will be doing some more rock wool all sound control, safe and sound in all the interior walls before the drywaller gets, uh, gets started. So make sure you guys are subscribed for that. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this and we'll catch you on the next video.